In this lesson we're going to look at the feature of block scoping variables and also functions in ES6. So we've defined a simple function called count to 10 which simply has a for loop that logs out the numbers from 1 to 10. So nothing too complicated about this and it obviously works okay but what you might not know is that the variable i that we've defined within the for loop actually leaks out into the rest of the function. So we can access it outside of the for loop and you'll notice it now has a value of 11 because it's been iterated one more time before it's left the for loop. And that's normal JavaScript behavior before ES6 features came in. And hopefully you can see where there'd be lots of times where this might be a problem. We'd be safer if JavaScript didn't keep the reference to i after the for loop's finished and only make it accessible inside of that for loop. And this is where ES6 block scope variables come in. And if we simply change the var keyword to the new let keyword, you can see that the variable i is now constrained inside of the block, that is the curly braces, that make up the for loop. So we looked at constant variables in the previous lesson, but for any other variables we should really be using the let keyword to ensure that they don't leak out into the function scope of where they're declared. So that's variable scope, how do we define function scope in ES6? Well let's say for example we had another function inside of our count to 10 function, which simply multiplies a number by two. And if we use that inside of our for loop, you can see that that function is accessible and it does indeed multiply the value of i by two and then log it to the console. And of course, because that multiply function has been defined inside of our count to 10 function, it can be used anywhere within that scope, including in that bottom console log that we have. So because functions are block scoped within ES6, we could actually declare this multiply function again inside of the for loop block. So you can see now the console.log inside of the for loop is using the multiply function that's been declared with inside of that for loop block. But the final console.log, which is in the count 10 function scope, is still using the original multiply function. So if all that code looks a little bit crazy, then don't worry because function scope, at least in this manner, won't be something you come across in your everyday code. But it's just a reminder to take note of where you're declaring your functions and knowing that their scope that they can be used will be restricted to whatever block they're defined in.